Year end could possibly be the best time to appreciate a donor for a year of partnership. Sending a gift is a great way to recognize the impact their giving has made. Find out who should get a gift, what's the best kind of gift, and how to get that gift to your donor. Follow the steps in this video and you'll give the perfect thank you gift at year end. Let's get started. A number of years back, a friend and colleague shared with me his longtime strategy for gift giving to his major donors. He lived in Southern California and found a very exclusive and eclectic store that sold homemade jellies and jams. Each year in the summer and again at year end, he would order a large number of their finest flavors. They were expensive, but he would order them in bulk so that he could get a nice discount. He would load a box into his car and go from home to home or office to office delivering these jellies and jams. It got to be a great tradition and he loved it so much that the secretaries began to call him the Jelly Man. The donors and partners also loved this gift and he delivered them for more than a decade until the store went out of business. But he said that for years after, the office workers where he would deliver the gifts still called him the Jelly Man. It was an unusual moniker, but he wore the title proudly because it meant his gifts were noticed and appreciated. Giving the perfect thank you gift at year end includes three key steps. They are as follows. Step number one, determine who to send a gift to. There are many ways to thank and appreciate our partners at year end, but in this video, we're specifically talking about sending a gift to partners. Most, if not all your partners should get some kind of a thank you piece, either at Thanksgiving or the first two weeks of December. This could be a card or a letter, but typically it's the critical few, the 20% of your donors who give 80% of the income to your nonprofit who get a thank you gift in addition to a card or letter. Those individuals typically are giving at least $1,000 or more to your organization each year, making the time and expense involved in sending a gift worthwhile. These individuals, for the most part, are the most committed to your organization. They are motivated by your mission and vision and see the value of what you're doing and desire to invest large sums of money to help fund your efforts. They also are probably the most connected to your organization. Oftentimes they invest not only with their finances, but their labor, their influence, and their expertise. Taking the time to appreciate them, even though they say they don't need to be appreciated, is worth the effort. A gift just before year end reminds them of your partnership and that's a good thing as they are thinking of a year end gift. Step number two, determine what kind of gift. Determining what to send is harder than it may seem. You want to take into consideration that some donors don't want you spending money on them at any time since they see gifts as being paid for with their donations. So you'll want to find some way to make them feel comfortable giving a gift by keeping the costs low or by letting them know that gifts were covered by someone, another donor, who is interested in appreciating our donors, if that's possible. You'll also want the gift to be somewhat commensurate to their level of giving. For example, if someone is giving between $1,000 and 9999 I would recommend a gift of between 15 and 30 and if they're giving a gift of 10,000 or more, I would recommend a gift between 30 and 50. For those donors giving $25,000 or more a year, consider a gift that is of greater value. The gift should have a perceived value. If they don't value the gift, it doesn't matter how expensive or inexpensive your gift is. I've seen expensive gifts that have little value and the donor complains about the cost. However, I've seen some inexpensive gifts that have great value to donors and they never complain about the cost 
and see receiving the gift as a blessing. A nonprofit based in the US that uses 16 millimeter films as a way to get their story out to the world used to take pieces of the actual film that were used so often that they started to disintegrate and put them into lucite blocks and send them to donors as appreciation for them sponsoring a film translation. Those little tokens of appreciation were inexpensive but extremely valuable to the donors. For the 30 years my wife and I lived and worked in the Washington DC area, we would send Christmas ornaments from the White House Historical Society. We started giving those to our top donors over 25 years ago and people frequently commented that they kept every ornament and think of us every time they unpack the Christmas items. You can't ask for better advertising around the giving time of year. I also helped an organization that used to give candy as gifts to larger donors with the message, we're sweet on you. Corny, but people remembered. I solicited some colleagues to see what others give and I got the following notes. Lori wrote, one of the best ways is to send a Thanksgiving card. Current catalog oddly has some of the best Thanksgiving cards. If you're able to add a flat ornament into the card, that's awesome. Troy wrote, we sent Paul Tripp's New Morning Mercies to our top 40 givers. I continue to hear supporters talk about it three years later. Sean wrote, for our local partners, we bought potted mums from a local market and dropped them off on people's porches with a thank you card inside. Pretty cheap and simple since we didn't need to coordinate a time to meet to give it. Finally, Cecilia wrote, we sent a Hawaii 2023 calendar since we serve here. All those are great ideas. I'd love to hear what you've done that worked. Please put that down in the comments section for our community to learn so that we can all share in your blessing. Step number three, determine how to send the gift. As was mentioned, there are a lot of ways to get these gifts to your partners. You can mail them, set up an appointment, and even as Sean wrote, leave them on their front porch. Depending on the level of giving of the donor and the cost of the gift, hand delivering is always the best since it allows you to get face to face with the partner and even longer if they decide to meet with you. When you reach them, simply ask to drop something off for them. But if they ask you to come in, whether that's their home or office, take the opportunity to thank them for their giving throughout the year. Give them some examples of the output of their giving, that's statistics and numbers, but be sure to share the outcomes of their giving. Outcomes include people and places that are impacted as a result of their gifts. Share stories of lives that have been changed as a result of their giving. Use first names if possible and even photos of the person if you are not violating confidentiality or putting them in danger. It is not wrong during the holidays to send the gift in the mail. In fact, people are so busy they might request it. But if you do have a chance to deliver the package, even if you don't get to meet the donor personally, and just leave the gift with an assistant or on their porch, it's always best to deliver it in person. I've had times when a partner tells me they won't be around, but when I arrive, it turned out that they were able to be there. Those are the opportunities that we can't pass up. Thanking donors throughout the year is essential, whether it be immediately after a gift at Thanksgiving, Christmas, or other holiday even Valentine's Day. But thanking at year end is so very important and sending a gift to the critical few is very fruitful. I heard a few years ago that as many as 75% of nonprofits never send a thank you note after a gift. That's a crime and it breaks my heart. Partners don't demand recognition, but many expect it and definitely appreciate it when you take the time to consider their interests. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends or colleagues. There's no cost to you. We're building a movement through a community of life changers 
and it's my desire that by subscribing you'll learn principles and practices that help you secure the resources necessary to accomplish your mission and change the world. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. We're also adding valuable content to our Life Changers Facebook group so go out there to become a member as well. We've put a year-end checklist out there for those who are Facebook members. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before, change lives, and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.